Mars, President Lincoln. What is the meaning of this letter? Sir? This letter. It was on my desk when I arrived this morning. I see. Care to explain yourself? What I have to say is written down there, sir. I do not accept your resignation. Mr. President. You cannot go, Mars. I will not allow it. I have asked enough of Mrs. Stanton. So my health continues to deteriorate. I have scarce had a moment to mourn my children, sir. It's time for me to go home. Mars, you have been my, my main reliance these past few years. The battle is won. But the real war is reconstruction, and you, you made me see that. You must help me through the final act. The bag is filled, but it must be tied, and tied securely. Some knots slip, but yours do not. Edwin, your country still needs you. Answer the call. Will you help me finish what we start? Telegram, July 5th. The following are the official sentences in the cases of the prisoners tried before the court. We, the members of the Military Commission, after mature consideration of the evidence, find David E. Harold, George A. Atzerat, Louis Payne Powell, and Mary E. Surratt, guilty of all charges. The commission does therefore sentence them to be hung by the neck until dead, at such time and place as the President of the United States shall direct. There he is, Major. Thank you, Marshal McFan. Just don't get too close to him. Mr. Powell, my name is Major Thomas Eckert. I'm with the War Department. I'd like to speak with you for a moment. Would that be all right? Why don't you go fuck yourself? There's an officer speaking to you, son. It's all right. Can I have no one alone with him? I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'll be fine. Sir, that's an order, Marshal. Yes, sir. The keys, please. Thank you. Close the door on your way out. Do you mind if I sit? Free country. Mm-hmm. Here, Jolly Jacks. Plug tobacco. That's your brand, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Take it. Mm. Mr. Powell. It's pain. Pain. I'm here about Surratt. I don't know nothing about Johnny Surratt. No, not Johnny. I'm here about his mother. I don't know nothing about her either. Mrs. Surratt's been found guilty. Guilty of what? Conspiracy to assassinate the president. She's innocent. I know you know she's innocent. I only need you to make a statement saying as much. I ain't interested in making no statements. Sir, you stormed into Secretary Seward's home. You struck his son in the skull with the butt of your pistol and threw him down a flight of stairs. You bludgeoned his guard and tossed his daughter to the ground like a rag doll. And you stabbed Secretary Seward upward of a dozen times. Lived. But his son will never be the same again. And his daughter will never forget your face for the rest of her days. These are your sins, sir. But if you don't intercede, that woman is going to pay the price for the blood you shed. Come in. Secretary Stanton. Be brief. I don't have a moment to spare. Yes, of course, sir. We've come here, Marshal McPhail and I, because we brief, both feel... Brief, Major Eckert. We're here about the woman. The woman? Mary Surratt, sir. Uh, 
I see. I understand the military tribunal has arrived at a verdict? Just this morning, why? Well, sir, not to speak out of turn. Arrive I... at the point... You've given her death, sir? I recommended death, yes, and the tribunal felt inclined to agree with me. You would hang a woman. To be clear, I made my recommendation to the tribunal based on the facts garnered from the investigation. They made their decision, and I will support it. They made their decision when they found her not guilty, sir. Is this your doing, Marshal? No, sir. The idea was mine. But I stand with Major Eckert on the matter, sir. I can see you do. Your concerns are noted. But, sir? Duly noted. It's never been done before, sir. Yes, I am aware of In that. In the history of this country, no woman has ever been In the history of really this country, no citizen has killed a president. So perhaps the rules have changed. Sir, this is a statement from Lewis Payne Powell. He exonerates Mrs. Surratt. He says she had nothing to do with the assassination plot. See for yourself. I don't need to see it. He's lying. I disagree. Look, if you want to trust the word of a ruthless killer over the facts of the, the case... The facts are circumstantial and you know it. She's innocent, sir. Innocent women do not keep company with murderers. Unless they're the daughters of senators, you mean. Marshal McPhail? Yes, sir. You are dismissed. Of course, sir. Not you, Major. Tread carefully, son. Do you know what you told me on my first day in office? You said the War Department was an instrument of God's light. I know what I said. Then use it, sir. You are a good man, Eckert, but I have seen more days than you. While we defend against those who would devour us at times, darkness is the only weapon suitable. Well, I don't love it. I do love that which it preserves. Please, sir, who don't is, do this. Who is she to you that you should care so much whether she lives or dies? I could ask you the same question. I don't care. This isn't about Mary Surratt, Major. This is about drawing out her son. He will come out of hiding. He will sacrifice himself to save his mother's life. And if he doesn't... If you really want to help that woman, then find John Surratt. Come in. Secretary Seward. Major Eckert, what can I do for you? I understand you are friendly with Archbishop McCloskey of New York, sir. Yes, he's an old friend. I need you to give him something for me. What is it? A message for Johnny Surratt. Our sources inside the Catholic Church believe Mr. Surratt has been given sanctuary. The War Department has sources inside the Catholic Church? The War Department has sources everywhere, sir. Major, if indeed the Catholic Church has given sanctuary to John Surratt as Secretary of State, I cannot interfere. I'm not asking for diplomatic intervention. I'm asking you to send word to Archbishop McCloskey as a friend. I'm worried Edwin Stanton is about to make a grave mistake. How so? Mary Surratt. I believe she's innocent, sir. And even if she's not, her crimes are not deserving of death. I had hoped the tribunal would give her life in prison. They did, sir. Stanton reversed their decision. What? I'm not supposed to be discussing this. You have my discretion, Major. Please, go on. At Stanton's behest, Congressman Bingham and Mr. Holt compelled the commission to change their verdict to guilty. They've sentenced her to death by hanging. Oh. John Surratt deserves to know his mother is facing the noose. If he comes forward, Stanton will spare the woman's life. Give me the message. I'll see it finds the Archbishop. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Only you didn't hear this from me. Edwin. William, what can I do for you? I've just received a dispatch from Archbishop McCloskey regarding the whereabouts of Johnny Surratt. And? The church claims they don't have him. And you believe the Archbishop? Priest of my standing. <laughs> Not this one, at any rate. Well, if he is telling the truth, that means Surratt's still at large. Presumably, Which yes. means we still have a chance to bring him in. What if you can't find him? You're a Catholic, William. Have a little faith. What about his mother? Oh, so that's why you're here. I know you leaned on the tribunal, Edwin. Excuse me? Do you deny it? That's quite an accusation. Do you deny it? I made a recommendation. As the head of the War Department, that is my prerogative. There's nothing improper in it. Was it a recommendation or an order? Where have you been getting your information? It doesn't matter. I've kept my circle close. Was it Major Eckert? Edwin. I understand Surratt is important to your investigation, but a woman's life is at stake. I'm fully aware of what's at stake, William. And if he doesn't come forward, what then? I 
Mrs. Surratt's fate is no longer in my hands. Stanton. Perhaps Major Eckert or whomever is feeding you your information neglected to tell you the rest of the story. I did recommend a sentence of death for Mrs. Surratt. That's the truth. I have no reason to deny it. Why? Because she's guilty. The plot was hatched in her nest, for God's sake. I recommend a death because I believe the punishment should fit the crime. Now that said... She's a woman, Edwin. That said, as she is a woman, I also believe special consideration should be given. I've encouraged the commission to make a recommendation for clemency to President Johnson on Mary Surratt's behalf. If he chooses to spare her life, that is his decision. I didn't know that. With what you don't know, I can fill the length of a Bible, William. You told me to conduct myself with integrity. I made my recommendation, that's all I can do. If the tribunal decides to sue for clemency to the president, I cannot interfere. If they choose to uphold their decision and send her to the gallows, I cannot interfere. No matter what they decide, I cannot interfere. President Johnson can. Yes. If the president disagrees with the tribunal's ruling, let him raise a judge and issue a writ of habeas corpus. Either way, I cannot and will not interfere. You wanted integrity? This is what it looks like. When will the commission make a decision on the clemency request? They have until the execution tomorrow. In the meantime, I put every resource available to me on the hunt for Surratt. I will find him, William, and I will see the rebels get the justice they deserve. And if your men fail? Surratt will come forward to spare his mother's life, I have no doubt. And let's pray word reaches the young man in time. Mrs. Surratt is on the front page of every major publication on this continent. The question isn't, will word reach him in time? The question is, when it reaches him, what will he do? If you want to pray for something, Pray Johnny Surratt is half the man his mother believes him to be. President Johnson, we do hereby request on this, the 6th day of July, 1865, leniency on behalf of the convicted conspirator, Mary E. Surratt. By a vote of five of nine members of this commission, we have decided to, in consideration of her age and sex, submit to you for clemency of Mrs. Surratt and ask that her sentence be commuted to life in prison. Members of the Military Commission. Mr. Stanton. Major Eckert, what can I do for you? Here. Here. A clemency request for Mary Surratt, from the tribunal. Leave it on my desk. I'd rather deliver it to President Johnson. What did I just say, Major? The tribunal has made good on its promise, sir. It delivered you guilty verdicts across the board. Leave it on my desk. Surratt's not coming. What? My sources claim he's on board a papal ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, bound for Rome. The Catholic Church explicitly denies having possession of Mr. Surratt. Of course they deny it. My detectives tell me Surratt is within our grasp, that it's possible he's hiding here in the capital. The detectives are wrong. I don't think so. Leave it on my desk. This won't bring Lincoln back. I beg your pardon. If atonement is what you're looking for, I promise you won't find it at the end of a noose. Major, do not make me ask you again. Here. Thank you. I want you to know, I'll be tendering my resignation by end of day. I don't accept your resignation. That, Secretary Stanton, is one thing you don't get to decide. Telegram, July 6th, 1865, to Capitol Prison CO General Hancock. In preparation for tomorrow's execution, gallows are to be constructed at the arsenal in the lot south of the prison. The scaffold should be so arranged that the four condemned may be hung at the same time. You are also ordered to supply four pine coffins and dig four graves within the yard beside the gallows. The execution is to take place at noon tomorrow. Mr. President, there's something you need to see. What's this? Mary Surratt's lawyer has raised a judge. He's issued a writ of habeas corpus to stop the execution. Give it here. Of course. If I sign this, what happens next? She'll be retried in a civilian court. What would you do, Wells, if you were sitting in my chair? I'd spare her life, Mr. President. If you grant Mary Surratt a civilian trial, she will almost certainly be acquitted. 
An acquittal will only cast doubt on Stanton's conspiracy case. You said it yourself. I can't be seen to meddle in Stanton's investigation. It won't be seen as meddling, sir. It'll be seen as mercy. And the people of the South will thank you for it. The tribunal has spoken, Wells. The jurors want her dead. Now, if they change their mind and decide to sue for clemency, that's a different story. But for now, I can't get involved. Politics aside, Mr. President, it's the right thing to do. If Mary Surratt dies, Stanton's conspiracy case dies with her, true? In a matter of speaking. But if I sign this writ and she gets a new trial, every single witness on the prosecution's list will be called to testify under oath. Every witness. Including Ella Starr. I need to mull it over, Wells. That'll be all. Of course, Mr. President. The choice is yours. Jesus Christ, preserver of all mercy and reality, and the Father Creator, we give him glory as we give into his arms everlasting peace to be prepared to return into the denser reality of God the Father, creator of all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Father Walters. Mr. Stanton? I'd like a moment alone with her, please. Of course, sir. You see this, Mrs. Surratt? It's a clemency request. The members of the Tribunal Commission are asking your life be spared. I want you to know I take no pleasure in the position in which you find yourself, in which we find ourselves. And yet, here we are. I don't want this any more than you, Mrs. Surratt, but understand, if your son does not come forward, I will do what I have to do. I hope he doesn't. Ma'am! Do you have children, sir? Uh, yes. I lost two of mine. What were their names? Lucy and James. To bring your children back, is there anything you would not do? No, ma'am. Then you know. I hope he doesn't come forward. I pray to God every night he stays away. I hope you're wrong for your sake, ma'am. Are you a Christian, sir? Uh, I was raised a Methodist. Yes, but are you a believer? Yes. Let not your heart be troubled. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you. John. You know your scripture. Then you must also know, the Bible says, the faithful have nothing to fear from death, only from sin. Do you fear sin, Mr. Secretary? Yes. I did not do what they say I did, sir. I want you to understand. I will walk to the gallows with a clear conscience ready for what comes after. When I was a boy, my father made me swear an oath, like the father of Hannibal against Rome, an eternal hostility to slavery. And like Hannibal, I've given everything in pursuit of that goal. Why are you telling me this? I want you to understand. Understand what? Three hundred thousand. Sir? That's how many northern men fell on the field of battle. I will give their families the justice they deserve. I will give this country the vindication it so desperately needs, and I will deliver justice to the millions of freedmen whose futures hang in the balance. It does not matter if you did what they say you did. What I say you did is enough. Three hundred thousand, Mrs. Surratt. You'll be but one more casualty. Mr. Stanton. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yes, John 1-9. Before I go, I want you to know I'm going to say a prayer for you. Well, may God make us both brave tomorrow.
to Major General Hancock, Commander. I have just received a writ on the behalf of Mrs. Surratt to move her case to a civilian court. I, Andrew Johnson, President of the United States, do hereby suspend this writ. I direct that you proceed to execute the order heretofore given upon the judgment of this military commission. Signed, Andrew Johnson, President of the United States. Mary Surratt, do you have any final words to say before these good and honorable people? Don't let me fall. Eighteen Sixty Five is an airship production, starring Jeremy Schwartz as Edwin Stanton, also featuring Lindsey Graham, Aaron Roberts, Ian Ferguson, Max Hartman, Sean Hannigan, J. Michael Tatum, R. Bruce Elliott, David Coffey, and Sally Vale. Created by Stephen Walters and Eric Archula. Directed by Robert McCullum. Written by Stephen Walters. Executive producer, Lindsey Graham. Co-executive producers, Eric Archilla, Robert McCollum, and Stephen Walters. Music and sound design by Lindsey Graham. To find out more about 1865, go to 1865podcast.com or find us on Facebook and Twitter at 1865podcast. And if you're a fan of the show, please consider supporting us. Become a patron at patreon.com slash 1865podcast. New episodes air weekly and look for special Inside the Episode interviews with the writers and producers of the series to find out more about the real history behind 1865.